Hello folks and welcome. Um, you join me today in my garage, which, um, which is where I spend most of my time. I'm playing GT Sport, pretending that I'm Chris Harris on cars, or uh, mucking about changing tyres. Haven't done that yet. That is my long-term Vauxhall Corsa GSI. We'll get to that later on. It does actually come to the end of its long time very soon, so uh, keep a look out for that video. Anyway, enough about that. What I'm here to talk about today is future classics for less than £5,000. Now, another thing you need to know about me is I am a sucker for looking online for used classics. Even if they're not future classics, I could take joy of looking at a 120,000 mile Mercedes S63 AMG on a 2007 reg. Because the, the concept of that car was once 120 grand brand new and now that you can pick one up for 12, 13,000 pounds fascinates me. So, top five future classics starting from number one for less than 5,000 pounds is, it's got to be the Renault Clio 182 Trophy. Now, the Clio 182 Trophy has got to be one of the best hot hatches around. Renault Sport, they just know how to make a great driver's car. I've driven numerous different 182 Clios, I've driven the 197s, but in particular, the Trophy is a very, very special car. In 2004, late 2005, uh, Renault brought out this Clio 182 Trophy. The standard 182 was already an excellent car. It was cheap, it was fast, and it just had this straightforward purpose of just annihilating a B road and you know keeping up with the most expensive supercars and plus they're brilliant on track days as well too and it's still a clear you can let your nan drive it that's the beauty that is possibly in the top five best hot hatches of all time well i'm waffling a little bit let's talk about 182 trophy so it's a limited run out special of that car um it was basically a final goodbye to that particular shape 182 before they introduced the 197 and the next generation clio so what is so special about it? Well, it was finished in that dark red, which is you know specific for the trophy, and it also had a clever damping system on the front. It had the Sax uh, race dampers, um, which basically helped with the front end. Um, it stopped any of that typical squirm that you would find from um, your typical hot hatches. So, you know, if you was to load it in uh, a corner and you just want to get on the throttle real early, it, I wouldn't say it kills torque steer as such, but um, it, it just gives you a good suggestion from the steering wheel especially of where the front end is going to be. And if you're mid bump in a corner, it wouldn't upset um, the drive because you've got to remember front wheel drive cars you know they've got a lot going on this you know they're braking they're stopping the steering so obviously the sax rheological dampers um, really helped with that um, you can get one of those on auto trader now in fact they vary quite a bit if i'm honest you can go 12 13 thousand pounds for a real mint one that's probably been left in a garage untouched or you can go under that five thousand pounds and you can find I wouldn't say a shed, but one that's been properly used. Now, I try and look for one that's been used for track days because chances are that guy um, or girl who's used that for track days uh, would have spent money on suspension, tyres and brakes. So, you know, anything that's wearable on track would sort of help um, in terms of a used purchase. And if you're that guy who wants to buy one for track days, then yeah, go look for one. I mean, expect it to be 120, 130,000 miles and make sure that those sax dampers have been redone. If not, they can get quite costly. But all in all, it's in my top, top five favorite hot hatches of all time. And it's also in top five uh, future classics for less than five grand. It's gonna be a future classic, of course it is. Car number two is the Mercedes E55 AMG, specifically codenamed W210. Now, why is it a future classic? Well, Mercedes E-Class, W210, it does look like a bit of a taxi, um, used in Germany, in fact. But it, the E55 is a very, very special car. Um, in 1998, it basically had a, a V8 beforehand, and then it had a six-cylinder. Um, but this is sort of in the 90s where AMG and Mercedes have basically started collaborating and bringing out uh, models that you could actually buy. 
before then, AMG was just a, a sub-tuning house from Mercedes-Benz. So this was an actual production car, one of the first three or four. You had the C36 AMGs to have come out. And um, this one, they plonked a 5.4 litre, normally aspirated V8. It chucked out 350 odd horsepower, 390 foot pounds of torque. At the time, it was a rival to a BMW M5 E39. It had a five speed automatic slush box, gearbox, but it was a proper badass looking saloon car. It had the, um, it had the basically double five spoke wheels as well, monoblocks that they call it. Um, which just looked the business, and you could get it as an estate as well too, which is even rarer. Um, they are now less than five grand. You can get one for seven or eight if you want to get an absolute minter, but less than five grand, expect to find 125, 110 between 130,000 mile car. What to look out on the W210 E55 AMGs? Well, the running gear and the gearbox are actually fine. They're not the issues. Um, it was, that, that car did suffer um, electronical issues. Um, it was coming into the 2000s, that millennium where Mercedes electronics were becoming more and more so advanced, but they also becoming more and more so problematic. But um, the one thing that you definitely do have to look at on those W210s are rust. They love to rust those things, mainly on the arches and rear bumpers, I mean from front arches as well too. So um, keep a look out for that. I mean, Use your common sense, use your head. If it's minor, it's fine, but if it's to the point where, you know, the, the paints come off the, the primer and the lacquer, then avoid it. Um, but all in all, it is a badass super saloon car, and um, it's just unlike any other AMG out there. It's not, uh, it's not your typical E-Class that uh, Mr. Patel would drive. It's a, it's a proper badass machine, and it goes like no other. And it also does skids as well, too. <laughs> Car number three, it's the BMW E46 330Ci. Now, you might be saying why it's not an M3. Well, M3s have shot up in money, number one. And number two, you can buy an E46 M3 for five grand, but expect it to be a shell with no engine or something with catastrophic failure and something that might have an SMG gearbox, which is just a no-go. So why the 330Ci? Well, it's still got a, a straight six three litre motor. You know, it's still quite fast as well, 0 to 60 in six seconds, 155 miles an hour. And you know, it's still a BMW, so 50-50 weight distribution, lovely creamy smooth straight six, more creamier and smoother than the um, M3 3.2 litre engine, and less problematic as well too. Um, and amazingly, they are good value at the minute. You can, they start anywhere between two and a half grand. Um, for an honest example, shall I say, and then they start creeping up up to six, seven for a real mint one, like 30, 20,000 miles I've seen online as well on Auto Trader. But if you spend five grand on the dot, expect to find one that's had three, four owners, about 100,000 miles for one. And oh, yes, one thing I need to mention is go for a manual gearbox. Now, early in life, before the LCI models, <laughs> BMW slotted at that era a uh, robotized manual gearbox, SMG, uh, which is basically a manual gearbox that robotized. Um, avoid that, please. Um, even if it means you have to go for the slush box auto, then go for it um, because it's just much easier and it you know helps with your wallet. But if I'm super, super honest, just go for a manual. It's a nice looking car, it's the E46. Try and go for an LCI model, so 04, 05 onwards. Um, yeah, what, what is there to say? It's the E46. I mean, that car in the next five or 10 years is gonna be a bit like what the E3325 I BMW was. At one point, they were worth absolutely nothing. Now you look online, they're worth about 10, 12, 15 grand for a really good one. So the M3's already got its halo, it's going up in money but the next best thing to grab after is a 330Ci and you won't be disappointed by the way it drives. Car number four, the Audi S4. It was introduced in the early 2000s. It was codenamed B6 and B7. B7 was the slight facelift model to that car. Basically, um, it's the one cut down before an RS4, um, but RS4 wasn't introduced till 2006. So this was the S4, the mild version. Compared to its predecessor, the B5, 
Um, this one had, well, gone was the twin turbo uh, V6 motor. And in favor, it had a 4.2 litre normally aspirated V8. And do you know what? The rest of the car is fine. Don't get me wrong, it's not the most engaging or dynamic car. I've driven a few of them and, you know, they're very, it's typical Audi. It's very nose heavy, not much steering feel, but it's got tons of grip. It's got all weather capable capabilities, basically. You can get one as an estate, you can get one as a saloon, you can get one as a manual, and you can get one as an auto. But the two highlights to that Audi S4 has got to be its understatement. It's, the car is just super understated. It's such a Q car um, in the way it looks. And more importantly, the engine just dominates the whole experience. It's lovely, it's sonorous, it makes a lovely baritone V8 noise. And um, you can do a few mods to them as well too, you know? So there's some supercharger kits out there. I wouldn't bother. I think 344 horsepower is plenty for I'd just do a back box delete just to have a little bit more, um, you know, rumble from the V8 motor. But all in all, it's a real nice car. And you know what it is about Audi? They, they seem to be the only car manufacturer that could style a car that still looks contemporary. I mean, it's been around for, what, 15 years? And, I mean, all Audis do it as well, too, even the first gen R8. I'm going off topic again. But the B6, B7, especially the B7, I think, try and look for a B7 S4. Still looks modern to this day. Um, in terms of specifications, completely up to you. The five-speed auto box isn't bad. It's, it's a ZF um, transmission. Um, and it's got Tiptronic, Tiptronic. Um, so you've got the paddles as well too. Um, it's a slushy auto, it's nothing, you know, it's, it's no dual clutch, it's no DSG, but it does the job. If you're into cruising and motorways, that's fine. You can get one with a six speed manual gearbox, which is again, fine as well too. So um, that's pick of the bunch. Me personally, I try and find a manual estate in red. That'd do me just fine. Um, in terms of prices, £7,000 is a real nice, like a good example if you want to stretch to that, but the whole topic of this video is under five grand. So if you find one for less than five grand, expect it to be a 135, 140,000 mile car with a few owners, minimum five owners, four owners, but don't be put off with the high mileage. The car is pretty durable. Um, in terms of running cost, it's just going to be quite thirsty. But other than that, it's an all round good car, a future classic indeed. Number five, last but not least, it's the Renault Aventine. Now, you guys might be thinking, why on earth I've picked the Renault Aventine? But bear with me, because that car is rather special in its weird way. In 2002, Renault decided to take their Espace and basically make a coupe version of it. And um, along came was this Renault Aventine. Um, it was quite different. It was very Renault of them to do it. And that was the era of Renault where they were starting to put humpback bums on Megans and they also brought out the Velsartis, which we won't talk about that one. But the Aventine uh, in particular was uh, quite interesting. You know, it had uh, the two-tone colour, um, it had uh, no B pillar as well. So, you know, you had uh, pillarless doors. Um, you know, it was a four-seater, so taking this rather big um, MP3 people carrier and uh, basically got rid of a portion of it, like sort of a quarter, and then turned it into some sort of concept. And it looks very concept-like, you know, it's, um, it's like one of those 1970s uh, concept, yeah, you know, like those concept sort of uh, cars from the 70s that they would plonk in Mars to make it look like something out of Total Recall. It, it, it's kind of one of those cars. You've got that vibe about it, but it's very, very cool. Um, you had a choice of manual gearbox, annual, uh, manual auto um, gearboxes, and you had a choice of a few engines. One in particular that you must have to go for is the Privilege 3 litre V6. It's the top spec model. Um, it's a nice engine, it's a familiar engine as well that you find in the Clio V6, which is, I love that car. But the Aventine with a V6 motor, don't get me wrong, it's not the fastest thing, you know, 200 odd horsepower, I think it's like eight or nine seconds to 60, but it's a real cool car. I've driven one and um, it's just very soft and different. Um, what to look out for when buying a Renault Aventine? Well, you're gonna have, to, you're gonna have a job for finding one, number one. Um, there's advertisements where they show 
Renault Aventines either in really pristine condition or found in scrapyards, um, which is a real shame really, because in terms of designs, it, it's so cool and um, it's so different from Renault. I mean, the car was a, the car was a huge flop really. I, they hardly sold any of them and I think it ran production for a couple of years, if that, um, which is a real shame, but it is a very, very special car. So you can get one for less than five grand, expect it to be a bit of a dog, but it'd be good to do some sort of like Wheeler Dealers restoration version of that because, you know, a car like that should go down in the history book. Not in the greatest history book, but it should go down in the history books nonetheless. And me personally, I think it's a cool car. And that is my top five future classics for less than £5,000. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. I certainly have. Um, I might start doing more of these, you know. Um, I quite like to sit here and just chat rubbish about cars that I think will be future classics. Let me know your top five future classics. You might have a different opinion to me and let me know if I'm right and wrong. And please like and subscribe. And if you want to see more videos like this, please let me know in the comments. Until next time, folks, I'm going to oversteer on this uh, office chair that I nicked from school. See you later.